Okay, so we'll talk about lung cancer staging here. Um, I always use this uh, table here that I create, and you can uh, cut and paste this if you can, if you can snap a shot of the video and make a card of this. It's a simple way to remember everything. Essentially, we'll cover all the T's and all the N's, and then we'll go from there. So, the T's start with the T1's. It used to be, uh, prior to the reformatting uh, of the staging system from the, to the seventh edition, it used to be just T1's, and anything less than or equal to three centimeters, and totally encased in lung. So, cased in lung, meaning it didn't involve the pleura, didn't involve the bronchus, it was completely a parenchymal lesion, was what a T1 was. With the new staging system, we've added a little twist, so the uh, T1A is two centimeters or less, less than or equal to two centimeters, and the T1Bs are going to be between greater than two centimeters, but less than or equal to three centimeters. And interestingly enough, despite the fact that they divvied them up into these two uh, categories, 1A and 1B, you'll see that they track together the entire time. So it doesn't matter if you're a 1A or a 1B, you're always going to be the same stage. There's never a T1B tumor that maps to a different stage than a T1A tumor, regardless of what the nodal status is doing. What about the T2 tumors? The T2 tumors get a little bit more complex. The T2 tumors used to be tumors uh, that were uh, somewhere between uh, three, greater than three centimeters, actually. Any tumor greater than three centimeters used to be a T2 tumor from the AJCC. It also included some pleural invasion. That's all gone now. Now we have T2, T2, let me just get rid of that there, make it neater, a T2 a tumor and that is going to be something that is greater than three centimeters but less than or equal to five centimeters all right in addition there's some specific features that they're going to include in a t2 tumor and that is if it involves a main bronchus so main bronchus and I want you to keep track of this one because uh, there's a couple of main bronchi uh, that map into the T3 range, and we'll talk about that. But essentially, if you have, here's your right upper lobe, and you've got your lower lobe over here, and you've got your middle lobe up here. If you have a tumor that's one centimeter in size, but involves the takeoff of the uh, middle lobe bronchus, like right here, then that despite the fact that it's one centimeter, like a carcinoid, it actually equals a T2A tumor because it involves a main bronchus. Right? Not a lung bronchus, but a main lobar bronchus. It has to be greater than two centimeters from the carina. And that's where this comes in because you could see if you had a tumor at the right upper lobe that was one centimeter, this distance is usually only about one centimeter. So sometimes a one centimeter tumor in the right upper lobe actually maps into the T3 tumor, which we'll talk about in a second. All right. If it invades the visceral pleura, so if you've got puckering of the surface of the lung, and on final pathology, they show that the tumor involves the visceral pleura. It becomes a T2A tumor. If there is pneumonitis that extends to an entire lobe, so pneumonitis to the hilum, that involves a lobe. That's also T2, and that essentially goes with anything that involves a main bronchus, right? If you've got a main bronchus involved, you probably have a good chance of getting pneumonitis, like in this tumor right here. Obviously, the entire middle lobe would be involved if you had an obstructing tumor at the right middle lobe. And what about the T2B? Well, the T2B is just a slightly larger tumor, 
So a T2B tumor is going to be greater than 5 centimeters, but less than or equal to 7 centimeters. All right. And that's going to be a T22B tumor. And obviously, if it's involving any of these other things, it's automatically a T2B based on its size. Well, what about the T3 tumors? T3 tumors. Let's look at those. Well, T3 tumors are going to be more than 7 centimeters. And then there's a whole host of uh, sort of caveats that make tumors T3. Anything that involves the parietal pleura, 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 all right, plural involvement, anything, and this includes superior sulcus tumors or otherwise pancosts. Right? Those are all going to be involving that. If it involves the diaphragm, it's a T3 tumor. If it involves the phrenic nerve, and obviously it involves the phrenic nerve, it's also going to involve the mediastinal pleura, because it would be hard to get to the phrenic nerve without going through the mediastinal pleura since it's enveloped in it. And if it's less than two centimeters from the carina. That means if you have a right upper lobe tumor or a proximal left main stem tumor, anything within two centimeters and on the right main stem, the two centimeters usually includes the orifice of the uh, of the right upper lobe. So anything in this region right here without actually involving the carina actually, so it shouldn't, and I'll show you that in a second, but anything in this area right here is going to fall into that uh, two centimeter range. And that's going to be a T3 tumor as well. So without involving the carina, but, but within two centimeters of the carina. And then finally, the last thing is if it involves the whole lung. And that's essentially an extension of that T2 definition where it involves a whole lobe. So involving the whole lung now bumps you up to a T3. Well, what about T4? Let's look at T4 here. T4 tumors or be anything that invades the following, and it doesn't matter what size they are. If it invades the mediastinum, and this is a little bit tricky here, and I put a caveat on this one because obviously the uh, phrenic nerve over here is in the mediastinum. It's underneath the mediastinal pleura, but just grabbing the phrenic nerve doesn't make you a T4 tumor. It makes you a T3 tumor. You have to actually see invasion into the mediastinal fat, like say into the thymus or something like that. In addition, if it involves the parietal pericardium, or excuse me, I'm sorry, if it involves the heart, the great vessels, If it involves the trachea, if it involves the carina, obviously, as we already talked about, the esophagus, the vertebral bodies, all these, i.e., sorry, all these are going to be T4 tumors. A couple other things. Up in the T3s, if you have a separate nodule, same lobe, you get to be a T3. If you have a separate nodule, different lobe, but the same lung, ipsilateral, you're a T4. All right. 
It used to be that the T4 definition, actually the simple man's definition of T4, was unresectable tumors. In fact, when Dr. Mountain began this staging system with Naruki, these structures right here, you really couldn't resect these things. We didn't know how to take out lung cancers that involve the heart or the great vessels or the trachea, the esophagus, vertebral bodies. I'll just tell you that all these rules have been broken and we have resected tumors in each of these sorts of things. The carina especially, as you can imagine, we have carinal resections. Great vessels, pretty straightforward, taking the order trachea, it's been done before. Vertebral bodies, certainly it's been done with Pankow's tumors. So the T4 definition has changed over time, but it, it, it's no longer just an unresectable tumor. It's actually based on these because there are differences in survival based on tumors that have made it in there. But as we saw, if there's not a lot of nodal involvement, it used to be that as soon as you were a T4 tumor over here, as soon as you reached a T4 status, you were going to be a 3B tumor all the way across, right? But as you notice now, the T4 tumors that don't have a lot of nodal involvement, and we'll talk about nodes in a minute, but the ones that are N0 and N1 have been shifted down from the 3B status to the 3A status. In fact, it's the nodal involvement that really dictates where tumors end up in the in terms of stage. The size has become a, a downgrading. You can see it also as well here. It used to be that any T3 tumor puts you into the 3A category. But as you can see, if you're N0 and T3, you've now been downgraded to a TB, 2B tumor. Similarly, large tumors it used to be uh, that you were automatically going to be, as soon as you had N1 disease, you're going to be up here in the 2B. But they did show that these 2B tumors do behave a little bit more aggressively. Uh, and so there is some size characteristic that do tend to make a tumor a bit more aggressively. So a 2B tumor that's N0 was moved up into the 2A realm. It used to just be a 1B tumor, but now it's been moved up into the stage 2 region. All right. What about N status? N is pretty easy. So let's go to nodes now. The nodes are pretty easy. It uses the Naruki diagram, as everybody's seen. The numbers are uh, 1 through 14. And it's pretty easy. Single digit. Si oops, sorry about that. Single digit. Nodal stations, so that would be N1 all the way up to N9 equals N2. Actually, it's not N. I should say it's uh, station 1 is the more proper thing. So station 1 all the way up to station nine is going to be an N2 node. Double digit nodal stations are going to equal N1. So these equal N2, these equal 1, 1. So station 10 all the way up to station 14, which is intraparenchymal is going to be an N1 node. Now, of course, if they're on the opposite side, the numbering is irrelevant. As soon as you have contralateral nodes, the number doesn't matter. It's always N3, right? As soon as you get to the other side. Remembering that staging system, remember that the nodal stations, so the stations 1 through 9 are all going to be mediastinal. So if we have our trachea here, and we have it splitting to go to the right upper lobe, and we have our azagous vein right about here, and we have our aorta giving off the anonymous artery right about there. And that's a carotid and our subclavian, and the aorta is coming down like this. Well, our nodes are going to be pretty simple. 
all the nodes that are from here to here are going to be the fours up here are going to be the twos way up here at the top low cervical so down around the neck so super quick those are going to be the ones the sevens of course are in the subcranial space and so these are going to be the sevens down over in, in this area the eights and the nines are in the uh, esophagus and the inferior pulmonary ligament and the fives and sixes are out here on the aorta so these are the fives and these are the sixes on top so you have one two three and four three is actually in front of the svc and three comes in two forms there's a three a which is out in front of the superior vena cava and three posterior is behind the trachea some people still call those high level eight nodes because behind the trachea is of course the esophagus um, but in the uh, official Naruki staging, if you're behind the main stem trachea, uh, you're a 3P. If you're in front of the spear vena cava, you're a 3A. And then the 2s, the 4s, the 5s, the 6, the 7, the 8, and the 9 are all here. For the hyalur nodes, the uh, stations 10 through 14, simplest one is that all the uh, interlobar nodes, so the ones that lie here between bronchi, so if we continue down here and we have our left upper and our left lower, we're going to have our level 11s in here. Our level 12s are going to be intersegmental. So as you follow this out to the apical bronchi and to the lingula, you're going to have the intersegmentals out here, which are going to be the 12s. And then, of course, higher up are going to be your 13s and your 14s. Well, what about the last thing about M? M got a little bit different with the new staging system. Uh, and the M status added some subtleties, although it doesn't really affect the staging too much. M1 is obviously going to be any distant Mets. Where they added some subtlety is they added an M1A. And that's going to be separate tumors in the contralateral lung or pleural nodules or what we used to call a wet T4 that is a malignant pleural effusion so contralateral lung nodules pleural nodules or malignant Pleural effusion. And really, it's sort of irrelevant because the other one, which is an M1B, that's going to be any sort of distant MET. And this is really only for reporting because it doesn't really matter which one you use. If you're an M1, a or an M1B, you are going to be a stage 4 tumor. So it sort of doesn't matter whether you're M1A or M1B, except in when you're reporting for the patient, uh, you know, for uh, research needs, because it's always going to be. And it's sort of similar as you saw back here. It doesn't matter if you're a T1A or a T1B. Let me use a better color here. It doesn't matter if you're a T1A or a T1B. You're always going to map the same. You're always going to stay together all the way across here. Similarly, if an M1A or an M1B, it doesn't really matter. As soon as you document any of these things right here, you are going to be a stage four patient. So that's the staging system. Thanks a lot.